So this is part of a series. Hopefully you've been following the series. If not, there's an annotation on the screen. You're going to want to uh, watch the previous videos before you watch this one. And uh, today, uh, last week uh, on Monday, we uh, looked at uh, Tiny Core. We mounted the ISO, grabbed the uh, init RD, the initial RAM disk image, which in that particular case is the operating system's file system. Um, and then we saw how to unzip that and then extract the files from the CPIO uh, archive. Well, today we're going to do the same thing, but with SLIDTAS. Uh, and again, forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but that's how I've always said it. Um, and it's going to be a similar process, but they don't use a standard gzip uh, compression. So uh, I'll list out here. We're in a directory. We got a couple of files here, some ISOs, a folder from what we extracted last week. Um, and this uh, ISO folder here is empty. There's nothing in it. And that's where we're going to mount our ISO in this case, as I said, our Slitaz ISO. So I can, um, well, I'm root. I don't need to sudo. I'm going to do everything in this tutorial as root because a lot of this requires you to be root. Oh, I guess not a lot of this, but in future tutorials, a lot of this is going to be root. So instead of typing sudo every time, I'm just going to run as root. So I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the Slitaz ISO to the folder in this directory. Again, you get the warning that it's read-only. It's because it's an ISO. It's a CD image. They are read-only. So that's absolutely normal. So I can go into the ISO folder here, and we can see the file system from the ISO. Going back into our directory here, I'm going to make a directory. I'll call it Slitaz. I'll move into Slitaz, uh, and then I will copy. And in, as we looked at in previous tutorials, we caught that the, the uh, Slitaz 4.0 has four different uh, initial RAM disk file systems, depending on what uh, features you want. And the base one, which is the basic basic uh, operating system, is uh, rootfs.4.gz. Uh, so that's what we're going to copy from the ISO folder, it's in the boot folder, root file system 4.gz, and we'll copy that into the current directory. So there it is. Real quick, we're going to look at the size of that. You can see it's just under 5 megabytes. Now, <coughs> you see that it has the extension gz. So right away you're going to think, oh, I can uh, gunzip this. So I can say gunzip root file system like that, and it says it's not in a gzip format. Uh, so, again, just because something has an extension, something doesn't necessarily mean it's just that file as is. Um, file extensions really mean nothing, they're for the end user, not the system itself. But as we've looked in previous tutorials, one way to find out what a file is, what's in it, is using the file command. So we'll say file, and this is a standard program that's going to be on pretty much every Linux or Unix and Unix-like systems out there. I'm going to say file and the name of our file. And here you can see it's an LZMA compressed data. Uh, so it's not just a standard gzip. So you can't just use gzip. But there's another tool uh, called uh, UNLZMA for unzipping LZMA file systems. Uh, or archives, compressions. Um, <clears throat> not exactly sure why this is labeled GZ. I do know that when you're, uh, that Slitaz does have a built-in uh, tool for remastering and creating live CDs, and you have an option between different um, types of compressions. Different compressions, some compress for smaller file size, some are larger files, but extract faster. So it's just a matter of preference which one you want to use. So I'm assuming that they label them all .gz, whether you use the gz format or not. By default, they're using the LZMA um, uh, compression. And maybe in a future tutorial, we'll compare uh, different compressions to see what we get as far as size. Um, so, but we're going to run that command. We're going to say root uh, uh, fs4.gz-capitals.gz. And we'll run that. And now if we list out... It has extracted the file. We got rid of the original GZ file. Now if we list out that, you can see that it is 13 megabytes. <coughs> and it originally was 4.9. So 
so right away just comparing it to last week's tutorial with tiny core which after just unzipping it with G unzip or gunzip um, it went from a 5 megabyte file, I think it was 5.7 up to 8.7 well you can see here that this is a, a much bigger difference so this uh, just off just looking at this in front of us I would assume that the LZMA format is going to give you a f smaller file although it might take longer to extract although I think the difference will be minimal when especially when you're working with smaller files like this um, so definitely if you're trying to save space this might be a better option than gzip but we still just have that one file we don't have the file system let's use file to uh, look at what type of file this is now that we've extracted it and we can see that now we have the CPIO archive just as we did before uh, so now if we remember from last week when you use CPIO dash I and then redirect that file into it uh, you want to do this as sudo or root because some of the files inside the file system will have root privilege only we do that uh, it tells us how much is written we list it out and we can see that we have our full um, file system here we still have our our original CPIO file. You could save that for later on if you need it. I'm just going to remove it for now. And I'm going to use a uh, du-h to see how much space is being taken up in this folder now. Okay, so it's 16 megabytes. So we went from under 5, 4.9 megabytes, uh, before we uncompressed the LZMA. Uh, and then uh, to, what was it? 13 megabytes and now that we've uncompressed the CPIO we've now got a 16 megabytes worth of files so compression is obviously important especially when you're trying to make a tiny distribution such as this but right now we have <coughs> the basic core of um, well I guess I think core means the full desktop when it comes to Slitaz but the base Slitaz install which as far as the ISO is concerned booting it off a CD this would be a very basic uh, shell version uh, with no GUI but of course you could always add stuff now again I'm gonna leave this just as I did with the tiny core in this folder for a future tutorial where we will churroot root into this and make modifications and install stuff and run programs from it so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, again similar to last week's just a different type of compression so we had to use a different tool to uncompress it and extract the file system and again on most distributions uh, the uh, init R, uh, the init RD the initial RAM disk file system uh, file is what's loaded to RAM with the kernel to load the rest of the operating system but both cases with tiny core and Slitaz are both minuscule very small um, operating systems and they ended up just using what their main file system is for the init R, R, uh, RD, uh, which is actually smaller than some other operating systems, such as Linux Mint. We looked a couple weeks ago, I think it was like 30 some megabytes for its initial RAM disk. And the main point of the initial RAM disk is to get a basic file system loaded for the kernel to do other stuff so it can mount the other file systems. Um, and again, you can always use the full file system but on larger operating systems such as Linux Mint Ubuntu you're talking about uncompressing a couple of gigs to RAM while the computer's booting slowing down your boot time maybe giving you better performance once you get the system loaded but also limiting your storage space on the RAM uh, pros and cons to both so anyway again thank you for watching this is part of the series there should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist new video on uh, this similar topic uh, every Monday for the coming weeks. So if you're watching the playlist and some videos aren't available yet, that's because they haven't been released yet. A new one will be released next Monday. I hope that you subscribe so that you don't miss any of the videos. Check out my other videos on Wednesdays and Fridays on other topics. Um, uh, if you have comments, comment below. The comments are not a good place for questions. If you have questions, visit my IRC channel. That's a good place. I'm not always in there, but there's always people hanging out. Come in there, hang out. That'd be great. Um, but that's a better place to ask questions. Um, also, uh, be sure to like this video if you're liking these topics, if you're liking looking at, at uh, these basic parts of the Linux operating system and just learning how things work a little bit more and definitely leading to more fun things as we 
come along. Um, be sure to like this video so that I know that you like it, and I'll continue making videos like this. So keep on watching. Be sure to stop back next week. And my website is filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I hope that you have a great day.